Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, weekly update vi video from me, Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer hoping to make features and bug fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me for another update. Um, this week is fairly quiet so hopefully this video won't be too long. Uh, first of all, as usual, I want to give a big shout out and a big th thank, thank you to all of the people who uh, recognize the work that I do and want me to continue to try and make Inkscape better for them by joining me on Patreon uh, and supporting me through LibrePay. Uh, thank, thank you all so much. So uh, this week, first of all, I did some uh, Inkscape website updates. The forums now have an event calendar where you can see their new challenge up updates that, that they want to do. And uh, I also added some uh, fun little peeps, which are random uh, avatars that appear instead of just the single avatar that we had before. Uh, these edits were actually mostly due to uh, wanting to have something productive because as you will see, this week was a challenge, I think. It's fair to say. Um, the actual accomplishment on the Inkscape code base was I removed the layers dialog from Inkscape. So uh, we were trying to replace the layers dialog with the objects dialog. So it was so now the objects dialog is now the layers and objects dialog. You may have seen the poll that I put up about <clears throat> how to do the menus. Thank you to the hundreds of people I think who replied to that. Uh, I think the decision that we're going to go with because the UX team has very definitive points of view about like duplicating things is that the primary method is going to be layer uh, layer and objects di dialog and then there'll be a secondary mechanism to do um, object objects which will change the mode I think I think that's probably the best the best way to, to do it um, okay so I managed to remove the actual dialog itself which is slow. And so hopefully now uh, people will use the objects in the dialogue, which is fast and also looks nice. I think it's quite, it's quite cute. And then I moved on to the, uh, the drop down widget for layers, which is, do you know how the, at the bottom of the screen, there's a, there's a drop down box and it shows all the layers that every single time you changed a layer property or selected a layer, it would delete everything in that list and then refresh it. And this would make Inkscape quite slow, especially not just for those operations, but also in gen general, because that wid widget would be quite unwieldy. Um, so the idea was to refactor that using the new layers code. And um, I managed to remove a lot of code. And then I managed to put in a whole bunch of code using some of the, actually the same patterns from, from, from the new objects dialog. The problem is, and this is why this week was quite a challenge, was because uh, the thing about the objects dialog is that it's a tree. So conceptually, you can store the tree of layers, like or layers within layers, within that tree. And the uh, data storage mechanisms help you. Whereas the drop down list at the bottom is not a tree, it is just a flat list. And so there's a lot of delicate maneuvering about repositioning uh, elements. And if you ever want to mess up a programmer, don't give them a technical problem. Give them a conceptual problem. And uh, yeah, in this case, it, it, it completely messed with me because I, I was just trying loads of different things to see how it was possible to, you know, not have to refresh this entire list every single time uh, something changed. Um, but at the same time, keep it consistently in sync with whatever, whatever the layers actually were. Um, Right now, I've actually managed to, to refactor it such that it is much, much faster, which is great. Uh, the bad news is it doesn't always put things in the right order and it crashes. Uh, but one out of three is not bad, right? So I'm going to have to figure that out to, to, to fix the conceptual problems between uh, the, you know, the tree model of layers and the flatness of this. It would have been easier if GTK, the widget frame framework that we use, allowed us to flatten uh, the, the the tree view, the, what's known as a tree store. In it, but it doesn't. What it does is it creates a special kind of uh, widget uh, drop 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 down that has chil children in it. 
uh, which is not what we want in Inkscape. We we want a flat, like a relatively flat list that that's kind of indented. So, oh oh well. So uh, that's basically what I've been working on this entire week. Um, I will hopefully not spend the entire of next week on this because there's a lot more of more things to do. Uh, there was uh, uh, leadership meetings, a bunch of other meetings. Um, we have T-shirts for contributors; those are great. And um, yeah, things are ro rolling along. Please let, let me know in the comments what you, what, what you think. And um, thank you for jo joining me this week. <laughs>